and Lucianami, but I don't think that that duo is as strong against anyone because Sanzei, he can frontline, he can solo kill, he can survive multi-man ganks and somehow turn them into wins. So great B1 pick does mean that we will see Pace back on the Athelios as opposed to the Jinx. And I feel like the Jinx has been a little bit more consistent and I think yeah. the range advantage is a really big part of that. Yeah, especially if you're not able to get as many as the beefcakes in front of you. And I mean, Cassante already off to a good start, so it does feel like you're just going to end up oh. trading this across. But a bit of a change up here. I have to see if it is going to be the early game junglers that are coming through for Peanut to see if they can have a bit more of that early game control. Oh, score. the Peanut Poppy to come out here, of course. Peanut has in the past played a fantastic Poppy, hasn't been playing it very much recently, as he was alluding to the fact that T1 likely to pick up an AP jungler. But Gumushi right now looking at the Zaya for that bottom side of the map. It looks like a movement away from the Jinx is happening here and the Zaya will be locked in. I, I got a call back. I got a call back to the fifth game against KT Rolster that T1 played. Yeah. Because that was a fifth game that they were able to win and it was off of the back of this duo in the bot lane. Gumayushi and Karia in a late game team that I think we've seen like three times already this tournament because that was such a pivotal moment get that combo again, but what you give up for it? Ari and Poppy for Peanut and Chovy. I don't know if that's worth it. That's a lot of comfort. That is a lot of comfort. As now in the second round of bans, we'll see what Genji is gonna take away first here. Clock ticking, and it will be the Lissandra to deny that answer to the Ari that uh, did work out so very well in the last game. Thresh taken off the board as well. Blitzcrank could uh, leave also like we saw in the previous game. I'm wondering if we'll just get the, the Lulu Bank coming through though. Yeah. Just making sure that you can't have any sort of yeah. comfort there. It's even just a good matchup into their Khan. He goes in, you polymorph and make it all good. Sorry, that art is incredible. But um, yeah, I think the, the big one is just going to be a case of making sure the pace doesn't have that comfort because as everyone has pointed out, a huge amount of this has been a case of these AD carries have been performing. How well can we try and stop that from occurring? Well, now let's see what Genji is going to prioritize. Could lock in a top laner, but that is dangerous because you do give counter pick over to T1. Could just be a support here to leave that one up and available as Delight. Thinking about the cow, wow. and there it is. We had a cowbell before. I think we're going to need to bring that one out yet again. So Delight picking up something new for this series. We'll see how it is going to work out. Fair bit of team fight prowess there and compare with the Poppy very well. I'm curious what the plan is here then for Doran because it definitely feels like you are alleviating the fact that Doran has to go for an engage tool here because realistically you don't have the strongest engage right now apart from the, the Alistair so maybe we get something cute coming out from Doran. And holding on to the flex here is T1. Now Rumble can go mid or top lane and Genji will still not really know where things are going. Of course, one of them gonna have to be picked into the Ari, and maybe the uh, Cassante would do better there, but we'll see where they're going to go otherwise. Is that is a Wait. Gragas. So who's jungling, so gentlemen? We, we actually don't know. Like, this could be a throwback to the Rumble jungle. It's not like he was nearly as strong as he was a couple of MSIs ago, but that is a possibility. It could be obviously just uh, mid Gragas, which we've seen Faker bring yeah. back this year. Um, but I don't. I don't think we can say for certainty, which it's makes it really hard flex. for Gen G. Yeah, I think it is a lot of the flexibility that they're trying to keep, but I also think it's a big takeaway because Doran probably would have liked to provide yeah. that front line there, have the Gragas to try and at least do something in these matchups. But now taking that away, we will see Doran go back to another late game scaling carry, but definitely something that hasn't been as strong. So good thing that Delight does have this Alistair because he's going to be so crucial for setting up these fights for Gen G. Still swapping, still swapping, still swapping. We'll uh, see where it does land. It looks like it's going to be the Rumble on the top side. Owner in the jungle there on the Gragas and fake is Cassante in that mid lane. We kind of expected the Cassante to be used mid. We'll see how Trovi is going to be able to deal with it. Faker with, okay, never mind. Okay, so it will be the Rumble in the jungle. <laughs> um, I hope that he picks the skin. He needs the Rumble in the jungle skin in order to play jungle. He does more damage to jungle camps with the Rumble in the jungle skin. That's uh, not actually true, no. <laughs> but um, I like to think that it is. And uh, I want to highlight as well that obviously you want to wait till the last possible second to give the least amount of time for Genji to plan for this. When it comes to these drafts, T1's draft to me is a bit of a question mark. If they and who is going to fall to the lower? Because after like a series like this, it's so much worse for the mental to then go into the lower bracket. You're so much more susceptible if a series goes this long and then you barely don't manage to pick up the win. And guys, last time we saw the Rumble in the Jungle, oh, don't it, do was, it. Uh, don't it was do Canyon it. in uh, 2021 in the final of MSI. And it was a loss. Yeah. Yeah. 
I remember that one. Oh. I remember the <laughs> Ira, you remember too. you remember who it was against that guy? I think it was an LPL team. I yeah, I, can, can you maybe say their name? Yeah, there was an LPL team was, that won was, a lot of MSIs, was wasn't it? Yeah, was it RNG? Yeah. 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 RNG, yeah. Or, yeah, RNG, yeah. I think it's golden. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sorry, that, that joke goes way too far back. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so T1 setting up for the early game. No shenanigans to start this one off. We have to do that check after all of the Scions that we'd seen prior. But no Scion means no problem as far as this early game setup. So, Genji moving on in, looks like a topside start for them. Just standing away from this ward for now, as Chovy will be able to get that one cleared. They aren't gonna help out with that. And that's quite big, because it means that there isn't actually any knowledge for T1, uh, for certain, where Peanut is going to go. The Poppy uh, is, Peanut in particular is notorious for just flashing over Dragon Walls. Yeah. Very early on, uh, did it all the time last summer. So him not being known, I think, is a really big win here for Gen Z in the early game. And it's going to mean that T1, specifically the bot lane, I think, need to play it a little bit safer. And gentlemen, after we do get out of this pick and ban, moving into this game, who do we think has the edge as far as these drafts are concerned? Because it has been a really long time since we've seen the rumble in the jungle. And T1 have taken some risks, I guess, with something that isn't necessarily as tried and tested. It's really hard for me to try and say right now, because I'm trying to like work through, I think something like a Gwen can actually do very well into a team fight against T1, right? Because Gumiyushi, relatively short range for an AD carry. If you can actually snipe out Gumiyushi with a lot of these ultimate procs from the Gwen, it can deal major damage and make these team fights very hard for Guma. But on the opposite side, I mean, Pays has so many things that he needs to try and deal with. The Equalizer, Carrier trying to jump onto, Faker even potentially doing Zayas casts, and that's where it becomes very hard to really say. I think a huge amount of this is execution, and can Guma get into the, the deal of the damage? At the same time, last game, Pays was a jinx with n effectively no peel besides just his teammates, right? There was no Kench, there was no Fresh, and he stayed alive against that composition. So um, I, I find it very hard as well, because I, what I love about the T1 comp is that this is a comp that effectively plays itself, right? You go in with Cassante, River Khan, and with the Gragas, and then you blow up whoever is in front of you. Um, and really, I think the only thing that you are really going to struggle with is Peanut with that Statfest presence. But I actually really like the Alistair here, so I'm thinking I'm leading to the conclusion that I actually have no idea. Um, as I'm arguing in circles, I like both compositions. Uh, and I think the first few skirmishes getting, for example, this Rumble ahead might make the complete uh, outlook of the game completely different. But that's exactly where I want this game five to be. I want to see how both these teams can go head to head on two excellent comps where you're going to have to see exactly like, can you try and have major upsets with like Gumiyushi flying in on feathers, flashing forward, killing off Hayes maybe in the back line, or can Delight find those big uh, uh, knock up combos in the back line as well. Like so much of this game is going to come down to execution and skill expression. And when you're in a game five against two of the best teams the LCK has produced, that's exactly where I want this game to be. Well, we'll just have to see where the first point of contention is going to be. Right now, just laning, just, uh, okay, Delight. Gonna try and find himself a knockup. Does have to flash to get out of the way of the grand entrance there as T1 getting frisky. Owner now moving down towards this bottom side and with no flash on the Alistar. Could be dangerous. They did have a ward, so they are able to back themselves away. Well, I was just about to say, we'll be very LCK for now nothing to happen for like 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, it was waiting for a fight to break out, but fortunately, Karia able to force a flash there of the light. Really has to respect, right, the fact that Gumiyushi, if he gets the Fatal Recall, can take him down. Post six, Light not's gonna be, not really going to be worried about that anymore as he will have his ultimate available. But for now, really need to respect, and I do agree with you, uh, Dagda. I think the bot lane matchup, getting someone ahead there, has been a really big part of whoever, uh, whichever team is at least able to get a lead and take control of the map in the series. Nice response to the charm there from Faker, but still going to lose out on this trade in this mid lane. And the thing I want to talk about is the top lane, because we've been talking a lot about the Gragas of Doran all series long. But Zeus debuted on a NAR, but then played a lot of Gragas that season and was absolutely insane on the pick. As we check in on it, um, he's winning out a trade against the Gwen in the early game, something that's to be expected, but he's been able to find some really great angles on this champion in the past, and we'll see whether he can do it again. As once more, Doran going down very, very low, and now Owner is going to move in. Harpoon's at the ready. Zayas 
very close to level six. Only one minion was gonna do it, I believe, is there it is. I mean, that, that uh, mid uh, top jungle 2v2 rather is really, really threatening because owner, if he hits his spears, especially after the buffs, me, you're going to get blown up in seconds, right? And particularly if you're Gwen, you rely so much on your shroud to avoid damage. Neither Rumble nor Gragas is going to particularly care about that. Also looks like, as expected, uh, Zeus is going to go for the AP Gragas build, so a lot of damage coming in from the top side. Yeah, especially since you are so AP focused, like the 24% magic resist that can come through at level 1 if you hit both spears is absolutely absurd, but nothing going to happen here as both teams are back away. Faker will spot out Peanut, but he's just going to make sure that he can secure the crab here for owner Chovy in the vicinity, but I really don't think Genji can do much here. Yep, Faker just going to move on over and protect his ward. Does so quite nicely. Charm is going to connect, but the Aftershock working out nicely there from Faker. And uh, still going to go down low, but he's Kassanti. just doesn't really care about that whatsoever. Gets to work on these minions. The slower pace early game, though, is going to help out pace quite a bit. He has the cool already picked up, like your kind of Felios. Like, if you aren't worried about dragons going across early or having to fight maybe for early Rift Herald and stuff, you're going to be in a bit of a better spot, especially as level 6 starts to crest. That's where Design and Rakan get so much of that early game presence. So at the moment, if things are not working out, Genji are pretty happy to just coast on through this. Uh, on the flip side, I think T1 also, like, looking at the Equalizer, right, the Feather Storm and the Quickness, a lot of these can be layered to make sure that you win any team fight. And then it comes back again. Like, if you are able to lock someone in a Charm, Alistair, Poppy combo, take him down, can win the fight from there. Same can be said for T1. The amount of hard engagement they have and ability to punish small individual mistakes is really big. This time around, though, no ability for Gen.G to contest. And that's why I like that T1 are trying to set these dragons up, starting to imagine move up towards this Rift Herald as well. They're the ones that just want to make sure that they can actually keep the pace of this game up, play off the two item spike that they're going to hit with like the Rumble and also Guma Yushi as well, and just make things very uncomfortable for Gen.G in the mid game. Gen.G have to try and find ways to slow down the pace of the game, but the owner's doing a pretty good job at the moment of just leaning to different parts of the map and making it uncomfortable for Gen.G. Okay, he's gonna have to stop that back there as the uh, Gravitum is going to stun up Gumuji for the moment. Not too much action as this game goes on. T1 um, picking up about a 200 gold lead, guys. Um, something Riveting. That I didn't need, didn't <laughs> yeah. need to mention at all because it means not a whole lot at this stage of the game because being risk averse in a game number five is something you'd expect, but Pace going to get knocked up. There is a very offensive Featherstorm as now Ona comes in. Pace is walking it out to light. Not going to be so lucky. Steak on the menu here, and it's going to be barbecued by the Rumble. So I said T1 needed to go for the Rift Tower, but instead they're like, no, screw it. We're going to give that over to Gen.G, use the factory jungler's winning resource there to go for the dive in the bot side and answer for their turrets immediately with Guma being able to pick up one plus the kill. Really big here. Uh, owner also, he hadn't backed at that point. Like, I don't know how much his gold is sitting on, but he is more than two M tomes worth, particularly after kills. There we go, their answer, almost 1,900 gold. Play still works out as they know where Peanut is. Uh, and. For Gen.G, uh, at least Pace doesn't go down. You know, was... All right, we're going real aggressive here as they get the knock-up. Bouncy Castle in position, and Ona going to be tidied up by Peanut. Answering back one-to-one -one now is the kill score. Amazing stuff there. You can see the double flash committed. Won't more than likely come back to bite them just because there's no real objectives that are up for the moment. But I was curious to see if you would actually see Peanut just immediately move down to the spot side and try to get some of that goal back into Pays. But going to move back in towards his own jungle, carrying out, making his way down towards the bot side as well to make sure Guma isn't under any threat from the jungler. And it's just one quick kick, or one quick kill for Genji. Want to highlight as well that with how this early game is going, the team able to get a huge lead. I also think that how Genji is going to use this Rift Herald is going to be really important because if they can use that uh, after maybe a kill, get a bunch of plates with the right weapon setup with Aphelios, you are even able to just take down a turret right from the get go, right? Although Guma's ultimate is about a quarter of the way done, so once that's available, probably not going to have that opportunity. Anymore. Yeah, and that's the thing. That's why I was curious to see if they just immediately went to the bot side. Yeah. Because yes, you've now got the red white guns, which is perfect for taking it, but. Um, Carrier is put on ward as he moves in, but the fact you will have the ultimate for Guma means he can't really do too much. And All right, well, that is a heroic charge. Faker in a bit of trouble here, but does manage to mitigate some of that CC. Goes all out onto Peanut. Now just trying to fight the Poppy. Chovy, though, is going to make his way through. Faker's still alive for the moment. Flash! Oh! And he'll survive! That was sick from Faker. I had no idea he was going to be able to get out of that one. It still might not. His charm just goes wide. Yeah, Chovy. Um, getting uh, 
getting caught there, but not stepping too far forward. No opportunity for owner. Really well done by Faker, because we talked about the mid-jungle 2v2. Snowballing, that has been such a big part of whichever team gets to take control of the series. This time around, not going to work out for Gen.G. Well, Doran being kept at bay here by uh, Zayas in the top side of the map, but man, Faker, the fact that he's been this good for this long still blows my mind, and I, uh, I've seen a fair bit of him. Just ridiculous. Give him a Cassante as well, um, whose buttons do do a whole lot of work. But still, Shelly gonna pop down here on this top oh. side of the map. And Doran gonna be given some money. Actually, really like this idea from Gen.G. Yeah, and this is what I was kind of talking about earlier, is like, when you have these short range AD carries, a Shroud and that Gwen can be such a nuisance for them. So it feels like Gen.G at the moment are going, look, Pace is gonna be fine, he's gonna scale into Infinity, he'll be all right. Let's see if we can get Doran rolling, get this early Rift Maker. He now becomes a massive threat into Zayas in the side lane. Plus, when we get to these team fights, if he can land these uh, ultimate procs through the uh, T1 team, he can do so much damage to Kumayushi. Delight. Getting over that wall, but spots himself a control ward, so uh, not going to find any joy there. And Faker now takes a bit of damage in the mid lane, but isn't too worried about it because he's Kassante. It's pretty tanky. I do want to highlight, Gen G have not really prioritized early dragons. This time around, I wouldn't really mind it because with Chemtech and Ocean already, or uh, rather Cloud already on the table, Odds are that you're going to get an extremely high value soul uh, and starting off that chain early would be quite nice. As Doran was waiting for Zeus, but even though Zeus, I, I don't know if he knew, he's definitely ready. Uh, trade not going Doran's way. Yeah, the AP Greg is actually having a pretty good time here in this lane so far. Oh, yeah. So as the dust is settling, um, oh, the reverse it, it's day? extremely even. We have another plate going down here. Uh, Carrier going to lock that one up. It says thanks for the extra bit of cash. As uh, Faker's going to have his back stopped, and now Doran in a little bit of trouble here. Zay is continuing to go aggressive. Still, he's Gwen. Um, does have his leeching there and things like that. Should be all right. Looking for a back timer. If that's game one, they're both from their ultimates, and they're, yeah. and they're going for oh, the yeah. all-in. Like, uh, we're, we're throwing everything, but now both of them have teleport available. I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see some pretty heavy uh, aggression towards this dragon here. I think that's the big one, is having those up and available for oh, the yeah. dragon fight is going to be so crucial. Faker trying to make sure he can get this wave pushed in. We'll trade some of his health bar for it. Chubby not quite able to get the Everfrost, but you will see in River already, Gumiyushi and Karia taking position. Owner going to be coming across in a second. And if T1 can control vision here, you setting up for Karia with the oh. big ult onto Owner. That's where you can find success here for T1. Uh, without Peanut there, though, it looks like Genji's saying, hey, we, we don't really yeah. need to go for this. Still on the top side of the map, looking for a back right now. Um, and looks like they don't want to take the risk of trying to fight for the Drake early here. I'm actually, I was about to say, I'm curious to see what Chobi does, because you can push in mid, which is just done, and lean to the top side, potentially look for a dive of Peanut, but Peanut gone for the reset as well. Looks like Genji don't want to cross map at all. They're just going to say, look, we're going to take this slow, make sure that we're trying to match in case they immediately try to move into bot or uh, mid, and not let Pays fall behind in this one. Well, further behind. Oh, Ocean Soul is uh, going to happen, so now we get one of yours. Nice. So triple Dagda, an Orcs, and a Chronicler. Yeah. Love to see it. No, I miss no, out. No Atlas yet, yeah, but you, you, you have plenty. There has been a Cloud Drake in every game, and I'll take that, you know? Um, so we've had five. So five has, have gone down, so that's more than, you know, a regular game. Yeah. So I think it's I'll nice. take that. I'll I take think it's that. neat. Uh, Riftmaker done for Doran here. That's a really, really big spike for the Gwen. Uh, and if we look at how some of these champions use, right, the Ocean Soul, Gwen to me is the main one. She already feels extremely unfair once she builds up enough AP. Uh, the amount of sustain that she gets from her needles and her Q is kind of insane. Um, and let me tell you, if you add an Ocean Soul on top of that, yeah. that top lane 1v1 is not going to be sustainable anymore. It feels like it, it sounds like it started raining. In here. And I actually kind of love that because we've got an Ocean Soul. Thank you so much, London, for that one. It's now C1. That's the Shirley being started here, down to 4,000 health as Genji are looking for the team fight. Good knock up onto Carrier, but he gets himself out. Phenomenal equalizer, right in the right position. Carrier has to get out of there though, he's very, very low. The feathers get pulled back, but no joy is almost there from Doran. And it's going to be Chovy that finishes that one off. Collects another kill, doesn't get the charm as T1 now just trying to get themselves to safety. And by the end, nothing happens. Well, nice. Carrier went there down. Yeah, oh, Carrier went down. Never. And, the, the and, the, and they got so the it's an even trade. Good yeah. enough. Yeah. What I want to highlight there is both the setup from T1, the bait that they were uh, setting up with Zayas, hiding in the pit, and then the response time that we see here. Crucially, 
Um, this is after Peanut misses the the ultimate. Uh, the ultimate. That could have been a game deciding factor. Draw your attention to the flash that's about to come out here. Oh, 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 but even though he doesn't go down, uh, crucially, Pays is still zoned away oh, from the second. fight as Odoran. Yeah, Doran could be in a little bit of trouble here. His own is going to move up, lands the harpoons, and Doran not as uh, immune as he wants to be. Just going to get taken down there. Owner collects his second of the game. And not quite the best look there for Doran. Doesn't realize that Zayas managed to stick around in the bush, but you kind of get the idea that Genji are going for here, which is, hey, look, Chovy's going to be fine on the side lane. Let's stick Doran, who's got that rhythmic completed off on the side as well. But now, Delight, you don't have the members on the map that you want to, so he'll be forced to back away. Yep, just going to clop his way out of oh. there. Is now Faker in a little bit of trouble. Peanut trying to keep him in position. Goes all out. We've seen this one before. We'll see whether Faker can once again survive it as Chovy is looking to say no. As he gets over the wall, the charm still connects. And Chovy's going to collect it with the Foxfire. Just about able to finish that one off. Faker, not surprised to see Peanut rock up, but now Rift out of the mid will get one charge. The classic Faker, it's yeah. Faker for turret. That, that's a lot invested though, and they're, they're gonna get a first break and a subsequent charge. Yeah, there is the ultimate to come through from Peanut as they uh, flash away. Gumiyushi making sure that he keeps himself safe, but won't have that summoner spell for the next engage. It didn't want to end up uh, getting caught by Delight. I wasn't sure if Delight was gonna invest it, but you see it here as Chronicle was in a huge amount of vested. Yeah, because even though they are able, this is one of the reasons why Cassante is so highly prioritized. Uh, even though they do end up getting him, look at how much time he wastes, right? And, and not just time, Chovy is forced to invest his flash just to make sure that they actually get the kill. And because of all the ultimates, all the time, all the cooldowns invested, T1 then gets the mid lane play. Uh, we do see Genji trade back a little bit. If they could have actually started the fight, it would have been amazing, but they only get Guma's Flash, which, well, good. It is Zaya, so there is a lot of innate safety nonetheless. As a result, Gold still dead even at 17 minutes here. You can see, though, that Genji were like, look, if we can get a couple of slows off, Doran does grand, we can get Delight into the fight. But the fact that you want to hold on to this Flash is so crucial, especially when you're looking at the Dragon that's up in 55 seconds. That's what Genji are trying to play for here. And that's why you can see Doran now in the spot side, trying to establish vision with Delight. Peanuts on the way. They want to make sure that they're in a position to get good uh, flanks off four guys like this Alistair, so they can actually try and contest Gumiyushi in the forest. Now, gold difference powered by AWS, not giving us a whole lot of information, because honestly, the gold has been pretty much identical between these two teams throughout this game. The amount of trades that have just been incredibly even has been too many, so it's hard to say who's really coming out ahead. I feel like the team with it's Gwen, though, often feels a little bit more dangerous as he gets I a late, late game, but then there's a Zaya situation, and I just don't know. Yeah, it's really tough. It's also, I think, the first game that is truly close. Because even though some of the games that we've had in this series felt yeah, close, yeah. it was one team at a decent position, but despite being a couple of K gold behind, not so much this time around. A lot of vision that is un uh, inaccessible due to this ocean rift. So is Gen G actually going to walk in? Because T1, full control of the area right now. Yeah, early to mid game has been T1 three games and Gen G one game. And in this game, it's neither team that has that control. The thing is, though, because T1 have control over River, well, Pino just waltzing on through. <laughs> Doran wasn't able to defend that bot lane turret. So now you can kind of see Doran doesn't have control. So Gen G now trying to bring it back, but that leaves Pays isolated. You got to take a step back and make sure the AD carry's coming with you. So you got to be really careful. You can't fight in these corridors. If you get comboed with feathers, and an equalizer is unplayable, and it looks like Gen G have been slowed down too much, unable to make their way over to the Dragon. Yep, not going to be able to get in there. Too much control, and T1 will get themselves Soul Point. So Ocean Soul, in five minutes' time, is going to be the fight that they're looking for. Speaking of fights, Chovy looking for an opportunity. They managed to get the Feather Storm, actually a big cooldown, but with the fact that they just took the Dragon, it's likely that they are going to be able to wait out that cooldown. Yeah, I mean, look, yes, dry, our Baron's up in t uh, 12 seconds time. Oh yeah, that means that there is a Baron fight within the next three yeah, minutes, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> true. But uh, you still have Flash that's about to come up for Gumiyushi, so he'll be all right. Like, there's no real threat that Genji are going to be able to put off. It was a nice attempt, kind of just like, hey, look, I will see if he can fish for something as now. They're going to see if they can get Faker on this top end. Well, you know, fighting his time, not wanting to give his position away, is Faker going to mitigate the CC? And uh, yeah. we'll just walk away. So, not going to get um, too much uh, excitement and action and things like that. Yeah, I think after try one and two, like, is it, is it, even if we get him, is it, is it really worth it? Uh, and in this case, they also don't have topside control. And if owner does end up showing up, uh, the 2v2 is a much different situation than uh, if you'd just be one versus two. All right, gentlemen, I want to play a game. 
how wait, wait, at oh, no. what time oh, no. is the gold lead going to be over a thousand? Twenty-six. 26 minutes for Dagda, Chronicle, and what about you? I'm going to say 24. I think some, someone is going to get Baron. <laughs> uh-huh. So 24 minutes? Yeah. How about you? Okay, I'm, I'm thinking 22. So I have a feeling... Oh, 22. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a feeling what will happen is we'll get to next Dragon. Genji are like, okay, do we really care about Ocean Soul? Not particularly. Let's just try and bait Baron. Which means that then one person on T1 gets Dragon, and then we just have this Baron dance indefinitely until Boulder. What, why does I'm going to be wrong in 45 seconds. Why, why does he have a reason? <laughs> uh, I'm not understanding. That's not the point of this game. Stop explaining it so well, Dekka. Yeah, I actually feel sorry. even more stupid. Sorry, I'm the new guy. I'm the new guy. Right? Right? I'm trying to work sorry. it out. Come on, you know? man. No, it's okay. <laughs> well, we'll have room. another game coming up. If this is, is still going to move relatively slowly, there'll be plenty more games. Totally fine. Um, as, hang on, uh, 30 seconds away from being wrong. Uh, as Peanut. Keep that I counter going. Yeah, gotta, gotta make sure we stay on top of it. Carrier gets back to base just fine. And, okay, so what are we, what are we at? About 500. Yeah, it's uh, not naturally gonna, it, it's not just yeah. gonna happen. No, I've got, I've got There's something 12 needs seconds. To go. 12 seconds. Toby, can you get a kill in 12 seconds? Well, if not if you miss all your abilities. Okay, there we go. And is going to move back and pick up the minion wave as Genji. Just getting control around the Baron Pit. Understandable into T1. Against other teams at around 20 minutes into the game, maybe you wouldn't necessarily need to invest this much vision around this area, but uh, against T1, you definitely have to. So I want to highlight, uh, as and we I'm see, wrong. Owner, uh, <laughs> thank you for that, <laughs> very important. Owner actually going for Death Cap second here, so like really trying to max out, uh, max out the AP that he gets and just toast his opponents in the shortest amounts of time. Quickly, it's also done for Gumiyushi. Did go for Kraken, which we've seen more and more. Does mean that some of the maneuverability in a fight and the really big feather combos are a lot harder to hit. I think it makes sense, though, when you're only really worried about Delight's engage, and it's relatively easy oh, to I, get yeah, a feather storm or something. So I definitely like the, the trade-in. The only thing I'm worried about is that, like, the longer this kind of stalemate continues, we do end up Doran getting to super late game. We'll have the Infinity Edge completed. And I feel like this is, as soon as this Rabadon's deck cap is completed for T1, that's the moment oh, where yeah. they're strongest, and that's when they really need to kick it up the gear. It should pair nicely with when the, the dragon's up, but as I said, I'd be very surprised if Genji actually tried to commit to anything at that stage. All right, well, I mean, taking that inner turret meant that uh, T1 brought it all the way back to Deddy. So we are still waiting for someone to make that play that gets some sort of advantage in this game, and right now, it is just so I much posturing. I, I kind of, it works on so many levels. It works in the context of this series, right? Yep. Because uh, it has been uh, brought to a fifth game. Uh, also happens, in, you know, in spite of uh, how much more proactive the LCK has gotten, sometimes we fall back into some old habits, like five kills in a 23 and a half minute game. Surely but not. When, G, though. But when it breaks out, slow. you know, when the action starts, I don't think we're going to get any rest. So I think we should collectively Enjoy yeah, take a si the take, moment take, of, yeah, take of a peace and tranquility. Yeah. He Ooh. says to the to the to the guy who's doing the LPL, peace and <laughs> yeah. tranquility. Yeah. So much of that over I'm there. Just shaking in the corner, like what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm a changed man. I'm now LEC, you know. Yeah, no, exactly, uh, yeah. exactly. But I, it's that was quite recent. I like my LPL is kind of worn off now. Yeah. After about six years. Um, it took a while. How long did it, it take? About I was going to say, like, three, how long did it take? Yeah, three, three years? Um, okay, yeah. to stop just expecting a massive team fight <laughs> at every moment. Um, speaking of which, we do have a dragon coming up. This is, of course, Ocean Soul for T1 if they can lock that one down. Genji desperate to deny that one. Look as well, all cooldowns are up. Flashes across the board. You don't say. Ghost available. <laughs> As T1 there looking we go. for the trade, we're just going to trade it. Um, <laughs> Genji, of course, denying Soul Fantastic, but getting one Ocean Drake, not going to mean that much. This is the power of Soul Point. As T1 has started this one off, they can back away from it at a moment's notice. If Faker diving forward doesn't find Chobi there, Everfrost is good. Equalizer, even better. But Doran, he's immune, guys. Um, and now T1 will back away. Let's count how many are dead. None. I have nothing really burned apart from the ultimate for now. T1 still trying to push forward, trying to make sure they can get control over mid lane, so it's very hard for Genji to move across. They oh, Delight gets the flash headbutt, they find the back line as Gumiushi already has used the Featherstorm Doran down incredibly low, stays alive for so long, but it's not going to be enough. Another couple of kills to come through for the Rumble, and T1 come alive at 25 minutes. And it's 
starts off with the engage, but it is not enough. Guma stays alive nonetheless. Pays is swept out of the team fight by Faker, and without that damage, T1 is going to break open the base. And it was so even for so long, and now no. T1 are just crushing no. through the base of Genji. What can one cow do? He needs to buy 10 seconds of time, but it's not going to happen. And at 26 minutes, almost on the dot, <laughs> T1 will take the Nexus and win a game five for the first time in so long, and they will remain in the upper bracket here at MSI. Game five in international series have been a curse for this T1 roster for such a long time, and all they needed in the end was one single team fight. And an incredible team fight at that as well. Oh. Gen G think they have the jump onto Kuma Yushi, and he leaps away. A Faker, what a pull out. Finding Pays next to Wall immediately takes the AD carry out of the equation. And T1, I mean, straight up take a bow. That was incredible. What an amazing series from both teams, to be perfectly honest. But T1 in the end will be the victors. And I can't, it's, we're not even up to the final eight. We could get, <laughs> get a rematch of this. It could theoretically happen if Gen G can make it through that lower bracket. Oh, look at those faces. And elation here for T1, and they deserve it. We're not even done today. We're at the halfway mark. Yeah, that's we're only done. halfway <laughs> done. The dream is 10 games, ladies and gentlemen. Matt and G2, it's over to you now. You have to do it. We need to get to the 10 games. And I, I want to take some takeaways here. Uh, after the series, uh, which 